This video is sponsored by Brilliant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do web scraping with GPT-40. In this case, we're going to use that API to connect to GPT-40 and scrape websites. And this is going to be great for websites that look like this, where all the information are in one single page. And in case you don't know how to use the OpenAI API, don't worry because we don't have to have much knowledge on how to work with APIs. But for this method, it's more important that you have some Python knowledge. All right, for this tutorial, we're going to work with the OpenAI Playground, which is this page. And here we can connect with GPT-40. We have different models and we can use GPT-40. And the Playground works in a similar way to the ChatGPT interface. But in this case, the information that we have to fill is information for the system here and then information for the user. And first, for the system, here's what I'm going to type. You're a web scraper, extract data from the tables and return it in JSON format. So this is for the system. And now I need to fill uh, some prompt for the user. And for the user, I'm going to give the screenshot of that website that I want to scrape. And in this case, I have this website. And what I'm going to do is simply take a screenshot of this website and then give it to the OpenAI Playground that connects to GPT-40. So here I just put the screenshot and now I can run this. And here you can see how the response will look. So here it's going to return some information of the, uh, it's going to extract information from the screenshot and it's going to put it in JSON format. So here I have some data. For example, here I have uh, the matches, Arsenal with Nottingham Forest to one. We can see that is the correct information and all the rest information in the table. But as you can see, there is not all the data because it's cat in the end here. And for example, Arsenal uh, here, it should say Man United and it's cat. And this happens because of the maximum tokens here. What you have to do is increase the maximum tokens based on the on the tokens that you want to get. So if you want to extract a lot of data, you should increase that maximum tokens. So that's just for you to to keep into account. Now, once we have this, this is just a sample. This is like a demo of what we're going to do. And here to automate this with Python, what we have to do is to copy the request that we'll send to the API. So here, this is just a demo. But if you want the code, the Python code, you have to click on this button here on the upper right corner that says view code. And here we have the Python code. So basically, this is the equivalent of what we did before, but now this is with Python. So here I have the system, I have the prompt for the system, and then I have the user and the prompt for the user. So here you can copy and paste it into your code editor. But before I copy and paste all of this, let's automate every step that we've done so far with Python. So first, what I'm going to do is automate the way we take screenshots. We're going to do this with Selenium and Python. So here, if I go to the right, we can see that simple script, which will help us take screenshots of any website. And this is very simple. We just have to import WebDriver from Selenium, then create a variable with a website, with a link of the website, then go to the website, maximize the window, add a wait of two seconds, and then use this driver that save screenshot and this is going to be the name of the png file that we're going to create for the website so here if i run this we're going to see that uh, the steps are going to be automated so here i maximize the window then the window is going to be closed but before that we took the screenshot so here if i open here and i open a screenshot that png which is the file that was generated after taking the screenshot, we can see the screenshot with all the data. So with this, the first step is almost done. As you can see, we have the screenshot of the website. But unfortunately, this is not all the information in the website, because if we go here to the website that is here, we can see that to see all the data, we have to scroll down. So here we have to scroll down multiple times to get all the data, to see all the data. And what this means is that what we have to do is to scroll down, take a screenshot and then scroll down, take a new screenshot and repeat that process until we reach the end of the site. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to close this first screenshot. This is going to be just the first of many screenshots that we're going to take. And now I'm going to show you the second part of this script. And this is the scrolling part. So in this part, this is the main the main, uh, the main part of this script. This is what makes scrolling on the site possible. What it's about is the same script that we had before for taking the screenshot. And here, if I run this, 
we're going to see that now the site is going to be open but now we're going to scroll down every one second and after scrolling down we're going to take a screenshot right now i'm not taking a screenshot this is just a demo of how this works and this is easily done with python so now I showed you how this works and we only have to pass this while loop into the screenshot script. And I'm gonna leave all these scripts in the description below so you can understand the concepts and then use the same concepts to scrape similar websites. Here I only have to copy this while loop and then put it here. And then this driver that save a screenshot should be here. Now for the final part, I only have to add the code that connects to the OpenAI API. And to do this here, again, I have to go to the playground. And here in the demo that I did before, I have to go here to view code. And here I have to copy this code and paste it into my script. And here we're gonna make some changes to this script. The first change that we're gonna make is we're gonna add our API key here. We're gonna add our API key. Then what we're gonna do is change the image URL here in the user, in the user role. What we have to do is change this URL. So here we have to put our screenshot in base64 format for this to work. When we save our screenshot using the Python script that I showed you before, we export the screenshot into a PNG file. And then what we have to do is not use that, but use another thing that I'm going to show you to get the, the screenshot in base64 format. And finally, what we're going to do is also change this max tokens. Here is set to 256. And with this, you're not going to get all the data because it's going to be cut when it reaches 256 tokens. And here, what we have to do is increase. So here I'm going back to my script. And here I already have the script where I added the OpenAI API code, and this is this one. So first to get the API key, what you have to do is go here to Playground, and then here on the bottom, you're gonna see this section that says API keys. And here, what you have to do is create a new secret key. You press here, you give it a name, and then you click on create secret key. And then you're gonna copy and paste that secret key here inside the OpenAI inside this parentheses and what i recommend you here is to create an environment variable and then call this environment variable here so you don't show your api key after you add your api key the next thing that you have to change as i said before is here the url so here what you have to do is add the variable where you obtain the screenshot in this case uh, before in this screenshot.py we use the save screenshot function here and we generated a png file but for this case, we're not gonna use this function because this generates a PNG file. And what we have to use here is base64. And to do this, to generate this base64, what we have to do is use this driver that gets screenshot as base64. In this case, I named this as test. This is the name of my variable. And here I added this variable inside this. Here I'm using f string and here, I added this test variable inside this. And with this, I'm giving the screenshot to GPT-40. Finally, here in the tokens, I set this as 1000 for this simple test, but you might need more based on the data that you're going to scrape. And these are all the changes that you have to make after copying the code to connect to the OpenAI API. And well, finally, you have to use this response that choices and this zero that indicates the first element and then that message that content to get the data that that gpt 4 o is going to struck and we have to print this in this case to get this data and to show it to you and well and here we end with the with a while loop which by the way the code that we copied from open ai is inside this while loop so all of this is inside this while loop so basically what we're going to do is open the website, this website that we're using for this test, then maximizing the window, and then we're gonna start with a while loop. First, we make the screenshot, then we do the scrolling, and then we connect to OpenAI, and we use GPT-40. After that, we show the response, and once we reach the end of the site, we break this while loop, and then we close the website. And that's how it's going to work. So here, I'm going to run this and see what happens. So here first that website is open and now we start with the first scrolling. So now it's going to take the screenshot and then it's going to show the 
the first um, the first data extracted from these two tables and then it's going to go and do another screenshot and it's going to extract again the data and here i'm going to show you the data that it extracted so far so here we have this data in json format as we asked and here first we have the for example the first match arsenal with nottingham forest then the second match the third fourth and so on and if we scroll down until we get to the bottom we're going to see that is going to cat because sometimes uh, it reaches the limit which is 1000 tokens and that's why sometimes it cats and well it's going to continue and it's going to do that until it reaches the end of the website and here in this case i'm going to to quit this so i end with the demo because it's going to make a lot of scrolling before it ends with this with this process and well these are all the steps you have to follow to scrape with gpt40 using the api now something important that i want to mention is why we do the scrollings so before making this video i try giving gpt40 only one screenshot with all the data in the website so i managed to get all the data in the website in one single screenshot and then i gave gpt40 that big screenshot but when gpt40 extracted the data from the tables in that big screenshot i noticed that most of the data that it, it extracted was not the right data and it was generating fake data data that wasn't in the screenshot that i gave it and the reason why i think that happened is because when you give big screenshots the quality of the screenshot is not good and then gpt40 is not able to see clearly the data that is in the screenshot and it ends up generating fake data and also i tried different ways to simplify all this process and i found that doing scrolling and then taking a screenshot and then scrolling again and taking another screenshot was the best way to get reliable data using the gpt40 api and to find this way to scrape websites with gpt40 i have to use my problem solving skills and another i've been using in the past months to keep improving this skill is brilliant.org which is the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant helps build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, which is better than memorizing formulas, and it's necessary if you want to survive in the new AI age, where tools like ChatGPT are becoming smarter every year. Brilliant has a section dedicated to developing your scientific thinking. You learn key scientific principles from simple machines like gears and pulleys to Einstein's theory of relativity. What I like about Brilliant is that its interactive exercises help build our natural intuition while gaining deep knowledge of scientific principles. These types of exercises makes learning fun and easier. For example, in this exercise, I could easily find the center of mass of this system because I saw that after moving the two masses to the left, the system collapsed, while moving them to the opposite side kept the system balanced. So as you can see, this app is perfect for learners of every level and no heavy math is required. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash thepycoach or click on the link in the description. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and now let's go back to the video. Alright, that's it for this video. I'm gonna leave all these scripts in the description of this video so you can scrape websites that have all the information in one single page. And I'll see you on the next video.